Isaiah 48, verses 15, that I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him, I have brought him, and his way will prosper. Now, who is this him? Him is you and I. That when God has called us out of the world and brought us into salvation, he wants or he expects all of us to prosper in salvation. That is why we've seen in verses 18 of NIV, scriptures reading and saying in verses 18 of NIV, 17, the second portion of that scripture, the Bible is saying that I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you and who directs you in the way that you should go. Now, a child of God, I want you to understand this. God has all the best intention for your life. Let me repeat it again. God has the best intentions for your life. When, Isaiah, when Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11, NIV version when it says that God knows the plan that he has for our lives. He knows the plans that he has for our lives. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. That is the best intention that God has for everyone that is saved. But a question comes, if God has the best intentions for our lives, why is it that people are in salvation struggling? Why? Why are you struggling? Why are you saved anyway? Were you saved to struggle, to suffer, to battle with a lot of issues that you never overcome? The answer is no. You are saved to prosper in every way of life. And God in salvation teaches us the best way how to live. But the challenge is here. When people get saved, people fail to know God. Let me repeat that again. Many people claim that they know God, yet very many people don't know God. Because in, De in Daniel chapter 11, scripture clearly tells us that the people know, that know they are God. The first thing, if you are to prosper in life, you must know God. Because when you have known God, what is next? The people that know they are God are strong. That means that God has never brought you to be weak in salvation. Salvation makes you strong in life, better in life, a victorious person in life. And when you are strong in God, the next thing is you're going to do great exploits. That means that when God teaches us the best way we must live, he wants great exploits out of our lives. What does that mean? When God has come into our lives, he's after perfecting our lives into his image. You and I Every man or every human being you see on planet Earth who are created or designed according to God's image and also after his likeness. And how does man live according to God's image and also after the likeness of God? When God had created man and put him in his image and also after his likeness, what God did is to put a blessing upon man. It is the blessing of God upon your life that reflects the image of God and the likeness of God in your life. And I want you to know this. Whenever Satan stands to fight against you, he is fighting against the blessing upon your life. Upon your life there is a blessing. So when he stands to fight against the blessing, he never wants the blessing to manifest. That is what is after. Yes, you have the blessing. But he never allows you. To live according to your blessing. So if Satan 
or when Satan manages to take your life out from the line of its blessing, what is going to happen? What is going to happen is you're not going to live the life of being blessed in this world. You are going to begin to compromise with a lot of things that are not in line of God's blessing upon your life. And the result is going to be you will never live that life of doing great exploits. You will never live that life of greatness. Now what is going to happen is you're going to live a life of just surviving. And how has Satan managed to make people known to live according to their blessings? Ecclesiastes chapter 6. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verses 1, the Bible says that there is an evil which I have seen under the sun and it is common amongst men. Now, child of God, this is what I want you to understand. Fight this common evil in your life. Say, I'm going to fight. What is common among us men? Now, what does the devil do? He comes, he disorganizes this one, that one, and becomes common. When something has become common in life, to most people, other than identifying that common evil, they call it a lifestyle. And what has Satan done is to use the behaviors and the customs of this world to teach people how to live. And when the customs of this world and the behaviors of this world catch up with your life, the world will never define who you are. I repeat it again. The world will never define who you are because it is controlled by the evil one. So what Satan has done is to make sure that people are wrongly interpreted. Every man you see struggling, every woman you see failing, the people you see, and probably it may even be you, who are not enjoying what their blessing is meant to be, they have a wrong interpretation over their lives. So now the Bible is saying that there is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among us men. If you can identify your struggling, your failure, your defeat to this common evil, then you're going to overcome it. But if you don't identify your struggling, your failure, your defeat to this common evil, it will keep on manifesting and even resisting you to become what your blessing is meant to be. And now the Bible says in verses 2, watch this. It is an evil. It is common. Among us men. And what is that that is common among us men? Which is everywhere. That means whether you go to Europe, whether you go to any nation, wherever you will go, this evil is there. And the Bible says a man whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor. Paint a picture. God created your life to be rich. God created your life to have wealth. He created your life to operate on a level of honor. Now, here you are. You can't see all that around you, yet it is upon you. You are struggling with day-to-day -day life, yet you are rich. You're struggling with day-to-day -day life, yet you're wealthy. You're struggling with day-to-day -day life, and they call you a nobody, yet before God you are unhonorable. And the Bible says what causes that is this. The Bible says that as God has given people riches, wealth, and honor, he never wants people to lack anything. Anything you desire in life as God created man before man fell. Man was meant to have everything he desires. Ah, now everyone is quiet on me. You are created to have everything that you desire. If you are in the will of God... If you are in that perfect image of God, whatever you desire in life, you are meant to have it. But the question comes, how many for sure you have everything that you desire in life? And even I who's asking, the same question comes to me. Do we have whatever we desire? Can you say that where I am, whatever I've desired before, I have it? And the answer is no. Now the question comes, 
What is that that is fighting against your living? What is that that is fighting against your life? This common evil where Satan hides to hinder the blessing to be manifested upon your life. And the Bible says, yet God does not give him power to eat of it, but a foreigner comes and consumes it. I used to ask myself and I would say, for sure, how can God give you all this and deny you the power? Until I realize it is not automatic that whatever you want from God, you can have it. Uh -uh. And to very many people, they think it is just automatic. But I want you to understand this. In God, what is very important, first of all, is for you to know him. When you fail to know God, it is going to be difficult for you to have his spirit. And it is the spirit of God that gives us the power to eat of our blessings. So if you don't have the spirit of God that can enable you to have or to eat of your blessing, then you're not going to have the power to eat of it. And what is going to happen? The foreigner who is Satan will come in and will consume it. No wonder when Jesus came on planet Earth, we've been seeing this scripture in the book of Luke chapter 4, verses 5, he takes Jesus to show him all the kingdoms of the world. And then in verses 6, he tells him, I give this whosoever I wish. That means that Satan can come and take away what is yours. He can come and steal away what belongs to you. That is why he's a thief. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the purpose of Satan coming is to steal. He steals from people. He takes away from people. Having stolen, then what does he do? He kills. And having killed, he destroys. That means Satan is after you having nothing. Because if someone has stolen what is yours, and having stolen it, he kills it, he destroys it. That means there is nothing. He's after you having nothing is after you having nothing, and I repeat it again, is after you having nothing in life. That is why what he has done is to come and to hide through the world. The Bible says in First John chapter 5, verses 19, that this whole world is controlled by the evil one. So now he uses the world to teach a lot of people what to do, yet the world knows nothing about life. And when I speak such a statement, you're going to be surprised. Really? What are you talking about? Can you tell me that the world knows nothing about life? According to God, the world knows nothing. But yet, because you and I, we were raised in the systems of the world. You and I, we grew up in this world. Now, to many people, if you don't receive the knowledge of God... That will set you free. Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5 verses 13. That my people are taken into captivity for lack of knowledge. So when you don't receive the knowledge of God. You will keep on running to the world to be helped to get better. And that is what people are doing. God comes into your life and serves you. And when he serves you. The best place where he puts you is the church. What is church? Church is a place where the will of God is. Church is a place that is a center. In other words, church is a center of God's will, is the center of God's knowledge. So now when you are in church, other than receiving more of the knowledge of God, what Satan will do is to come before you and present the world against your life. You say you are saved. But how come you don't have this? You say you are saved. But see what people are doing in the world. You say you are saved. See how the world is. Now if you are not careful. You are going to take your eyes off God. And begin to look to the world. So that you can live like the people of the world. Yet you are not of the world. Now what must we do is to stay in God and believe God to teach us the best way how to live in him. He has the best way of how we can live in him. 
The Bible says that the children of God are led by the Holy Spirit. How many times do you allow the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life? Many people, you want the Holy Spirit to come when you're in service. But let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit is for your entire life and every area of your life. Without the Holy Spirit, we are nothing. A very good example. The disciples of Jesus, Peter was their leader. They had complaints of life. They wanted to live better. They wanted houses. They had wives. They had children. They had land. And the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 10, verses 28, they left everything and then now they confront Jesus. They say, hey, Jesus, we left all this. In other words, we put the world aside and we came to follow you. But it was so amazing by then, they had not yet received what they wanted and what they needed in life. And yet that to them, that was the greatest demand. It's like you. There are things you want to first see to say God is God. If he can give you a car, a house, a good job, a good career, then you'll stand and even give testimony. What people don't understand when we've come in God, before God deals with your outer world, he, first, he must deal with your inner man. Because it is your inner man whom he saved. And when your inner man is strong, he has reached a level of having a spiritual weight of glory upon him. This is when you're changed from inside to outside. But your challenge today is this. You want God to first change outside, then he can change inside. No wonder whenever things begin to happen outside, we no longer see you in church. Tell that to your neighbor. Most of you are seated and listening to me. Pretending that you are so obedient right now before the Lord and so humble. Ah, uh -uh, it is the outer world now. Can God give you a billion shillings today? Can God give you five billion? Can God make you rich and give you everything in life? And first, when your fridge is okay, when everything is okay, will you be the first person in lunch hour like as you are today the first person in lunch hour? Oh, it will be business every time and again. I am busy. I, 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 I am caught up. I have a meeting to go to. That is why you see, whenever you are not strengthened in the inner man, and the outer man is stronger than the inner man, you are going to lose it. So what God does, it is first of all to strengthen you inside. By the time money comes, you won't be a problem. But receive money when your inner man has not changed. What is going to happen? You're going to have five wives. And you will assure them. If you want to go, go. I don't mind, I'll get another one. What happens when your outer man is stronger than the inner man? What is going to happen is, the inner man won't have enough control of the outer man. But when the inner man is great is strong he will control the outer man whatever you receive outwardly having been worked a work by god inwardly it becomes just a tool for your life to go to the next level cars don't become a problem to you money never becomes a problem to you influence never becomes a problem to you power never becomes an influence to you it is something that you are used of because there is a great i am in you than he who is in the world. Now turn to that neighbor and ask that neighbor, if you became our leader, won't we suffer under your leadership? Okay. Now that is why you see, child of God, you must understand this, that God wants the best for you. But how can the best be brought out of your life? By knowing one thing, every level I go to, it is God who has made me. Do you want to reach that level of the best? Do you want to reach that level of the best? But when people have reached the level of their best, God is put aside. He comes unto the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, watch this. He tells them these words. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 3, see what God tells the children of Israel. He tells them in Deuteronomy, 
So he humbled you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor when God is humbling you, he's dealing with the inner you. Now, how humble are you? Do you know most times when God is humbling you, the outer side is demanding so much. So the Bible says now, so he humbled you. He allowed you to go to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. Now when we come to God, those seasons of manna are there. Outwardly, people are demanding so much of your life. How come we can't see this with you? How come we can't see you do this? Yet now God has put you on a level of being fed with his word so that inside you become strong. It's not about the money because the money is going to come. It's there. It's not about anything. By the way, do you know, whatever you become, you have already been it. And what you will be has already been. That is what Ecclesiastes says, chapter 3, verses 15. Now to most people, what you don't understand, your marriage is there, your money is there, your breakthrough is there, greatness is already there. But you need to understand God more. You need to know God more. Because when you've known God more, what is outside will never control you. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 15, what's this? NIV version. The Bible says in the NIV version, whatever is has already been and what will be has been before. So what you're going to be tomorrow is already in you. And what you are now was already there. So now you need to be patient with yourself. Check that neighbor and tell that neighbor, hey neighbor, be patient with yourself. And on top of being patient with yourself, be also patient with God. He takes us through seasons and times. There are seasons of manner. Your family is complaining you are ever in church. Yet God knows what he's dealing with. People are complaining you are crazy. Yet you are very normal. But to the world you are crazy. That is the manner season. He's humbling you for the next season. He's humbling you for the next level. He's humbling you for the next doors that are going to open that are great. He's humbling you for great things to happen. So now the Bible says in the tone of me, and follow me very well. Watch this. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your forefathers know. There are things that your father has never told you to do, yet God is going to teach you to go through them. There are things your family has never told you to do them, yet in God you can do them. When did your family teach you how to read the Bible? When did your family teach you how to fast? When did your family teach you how to preach? When did your family teach you how to believe in God? But now here you are in God, you're being told things you've never known before. You're being told things you've never seen. To people who are in the world, they will call you crazy. Yet God is humbling you for the next level. And the Bible says, to know that, and the Bible continues to say, you did not know, nor did your forefathers know. That he may make you know. So there are seasons you must understand. As a believer, as a person who is in Christ, it is not bread every time. In other words, bread is need. It is not about your need every time. It's not about what you want. It is about the will of God when you're in God. What is the will of God for your life anyway? Because child of God, if you don't understand these things, you're going to lose in salvation. Yet you have the greatest gift that God has given humanity, salvation. What is God's will anyway? Whenever God's will stands for our lives, what does the Bible say? The will of God, those are, or oh, that is the decision of God over your life. Now, the will of God can be in line with your will. Tell that to your neighbor. Ah, I know. The will of God can be in line with your will. You want this as you, and the will of God says, no. You want to do this, and the will of God says, sit down. You want to do something, and God says, it's not yet the time. No wonder Proverbs says, chapter 19, that many are the plans of man. That is what Proverbs 19, 21 says, that many are your plans. Many are the plans of man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord will stand. In other words, the counsel of the Lord is the will of God. Now, child of God, today know this. All the problems you've gone through in life ever since you were young, the troubles, the problems, the challenges, the circumstances, none 
none of all those problems, however you put them together, some of you say, have gone through a lot in life. Those are never more than the promises of God for your life. Can I repeat that again? I have suffered so much. They've talked about me too much. I, let me tell you this. Whatever has happened to you, whether a problem or a challenge, if you put all that together, it, they can't be more than the promises of God. And the promises of God are in the will of God. And where the will of God stands, those are the plans of God that prosper us. The will of God connects our lives to the future that God has for our lives. And today, this is what I want you to understand. The future that God has has for you. He has prepared things that eyes have not seen. The future that God has for you. He has prepared things that ears have not heard. He has prepared things that have not gotten into the hearts of the people. Those are the plans of God. That is the will of God. They say they saw you before. Watch 20 years from now. The person they are stepping on right now. 20 years from now you'll be the provider for your family. Watch that person they are talking against right now 20 years from now you will be a blessing to those people child of God what is ahead is the best what they have not yet seen you become God has already planned it over your life what they have not seen you do God has already laid it down so it is time to know God more and let his will stand and one thing I've known about the will of God Whenever the will of God has stood, what does that mean? The will of God is the decision of God over your life. When God has decided that you are blessed, it is a matter of time you will be blessed. When God has decided that you are rich, as a matter of time, you just give it time, you will be rich. Whatever God has decided over your life, no witchcraft, no devil, no demon, no person, no one can refuse what God has decided over your life. He speaks it clearly in the book of Job. Job 23, what does the Bible say? In the book of Job chapter 23, verses 13, in NLT version, the Bible says, but once he has made this decision, once God has decided that you will be a mother, no one will call you barren. They may see you and they say, she's a barren woman. But let me tell you this, he's a God who can open up a womb of a 99 woman. Child of God, listen to me very well. When a Ever the counsel of God has stood is his decision over your life. And the decision is his will over your life. And the Bible says in 14 of Job, and follow me very well, so he will do to me. Somebody shout and say, my God will do to me what he has planned. Speak it loud, say my God will do to me whatever he has planned. Why he controls your destiny. Today I have brought a right interpretation unto your life. No sorcerer controls your destiny when you're in God. <laughs> no person controls your destiny when you're in God. He is God. He has control over your life. Be patient with yourself. Be patient in God. All you've got to do, know him more. All you've got to do, stick unto God. As you stick unto him, he controls your destiny. Today you are a laughter. Tomorrow Tomorrow you'll be a testimony. Today you are a nobody. Tomorrow you'll be a blessing in Jesus' name. That is the God I'm talking about who controls our destiny. They will call you a nobody today, but according to God who made the decision over your life, they will praise God because of you. They will come to church because of you. They will believe in God because of you. He controls your destiny in Jesus' matter name. Now tell that neighbor you are going to look for me. Right now you don't know my name. But 10 years from now. You will look for me. You will come in my office. And the secretary will tell you sit down. And before even you come where the secretary is. The getman will be the first person. To check you. Where are you going? Whom are you going to see? <laughs> he controls our destinies in Jesus name. 
Today they call you crazy. Tomorrow you'll be a praise in Jesus' matter name. Hallelujah. So now when God has made a decision, what are these decisions that he makes over our lives? What is the will of God anyway? Because as we are in the tournament, but before we go back to the tournament, see what scripture says in Isaiah. We've seen the scripture. Isaiah 26 verses 9, contemporary English version, the second portion of that scripture. Because your decisions show everyone on us how to live right. Now that is God. When he has made the decision over your life, he wants you to live right. You must live right. You must live right. Mwanyi katono no madem bloko si sila ba musajja ona mujawa munsi dayola bi dayola bi chuki namu mwa me kumi yaka jo jakubera wa kuta wa balo sabi akusag adam sija kuga me sikwa weleta ni sika namu katondo la bi sika namu katondo la bi this woman. Whom everyone was calling a harlot. She has five men. Everyone is calling her a prostitute. She comes where Jesus is. And in fact, she wanted to make Jesus number six. And Jesus tells this woman, <laughs> There is, you left five husbands behind. You left five husbands behind. And the one whom now you have is not even your husband. And the woman said it is right. But see how Jesus interpreted this woman of five husbands. They began a conversation now. The conversation they are having in John chapter 4 with this woman. The woman begins to talk about Abraham. And immediately... When the woman left the presence of Jesus, because God interprets our lives right, however messy the world has interpreted us and seen us wrong. We are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. When God stands in your life, he interprets you right in the middle of the mess. Now watch this. This woman leaves the presence of Jesus. She goes in the city. And when she goes in the city, she begins to tell the man, I have met a prophet. Come and see him. That is verses 29. And the woman carried the entire city to Jesus. How do you explain that a, a prostitute of five men who wanted to make Jesus number seven? How? Just a mere conversation. She turned into her real identity. And she went in the city. And he said, you guys, I have seen a man. She carried the entire city and brought it before Jesus. That is what you're about to do. When your life, God has changed it to become what it's meant to be. Out from the interpretation of the world, you will show people the right way how to live in God. You see how the world is busy laughing at Balokole these days? Balokola confused. But what is in Balokole? Chaos. Ah, uh -uh, it's not chaos. There is something out of the mess that Satan is trying to put upon church that God is going to turn into glory. And it's the same thing with you. If your life was messed up, in your mess there is a testimony. So now this God who makes a decision over our lives that makes us to live right. He comes unto the children of Israel. Now, if you want to live the best way in life, know God. Know your God. Tell your neighbor, know your God. Because what God is after, he's not after your need. He's not after your want. He's after your heart. Can your heart have his word? Because Jesus says, those that love me are the ones that keep my word. So now in the tournament where we are, the Bible is saying that so he humbled you. So every time and again in God, that is our uplift. God resists the proud. That is what James says. Don't be proud in God. 
Accept that level where everyone thinks you are a nobody. Accept that level where everyone thinks nothing good will ever happen to you. Accept God to humble you because through humbleness he exalts you. The Bible says in Peter, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that in due time he will raise you up. And when God has raised you, it is not now. It, you don't need to concentrate anymore on your problems, on your worries. Because in verses 7, see what he says, cast all your cares unto him. So now when God is humbling you, most times the humbling position of God in our lives is mistaken for people being losers in God. Speak after me so many times. As God humbles his own, they are mistaken as losers. Did you know that? And today know it. Whenever God has humbled someone, be silent. Whenever God is humbling someone, let your words be few. Because you will talk. Ever since she came here, what has she ever become? Ever since you began this, yet this man, yet this woman, she's on manner as the tournament is saying. And when you're on manner and God is giving you manner, even your parents have never done you such a good thing. Your parents have never told you that when you believe in God, you become an overcomer. Now here God is teaching you by humbling you to overcome and they call you a loser. And scripture continues to say, that he may make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. But he shall live by every word that proceeds from his mouth. What is that? Now, it reaches a level where God wants you to stand on his word. The world is talking and also God is talking to you. But what is so amazing is this. It is easy to hear what the world says and very difficult to hear what God says. Because God speaks to the dream carrier, not to the public. You has a dream. It is you who understands or who will understand your dream best. Now here you are, every day God is speaking to you. You are a loser. The outer people are shouting. Here is a man. Here is a woman. Every day God is communicating to you. He's dealing with you. With your inner man making you better. They are judging you. They are criticizing you. And the Bible says in verses 4. <laughs> your garments did not wear out on you. Nor did your feet swell for 40 years. So in times of humbleness. We are given a preservation anointing. You may not have the money but you survive. <laughs> you may not have enough but you survive. Even you don't know how but he preserves you. The children of Israel. Whatever they left with. They never bought clothes elsewhere. They never bought shoes elsewhere. The presence of God preserved them. And that is the other side of God that the world is mistaken about. You are being preserved in your season of humbleness. They don't know even how you make it to church, but you come. They abuse you. They talk the following day you pray. Even you don't know even what causes you to pray. You don't know what causes you to believe. But yet it is God inside of you. Strengthening you. Making you better. Preparing you for the next level. Because in the days of humbleness, you are at the potter's wheel. And don't expect when you're at the potter's wheel. For money to be there. It is a time of you being shaped. God is instilling in you godly behavior. <laughs> God is instilling in you godly characters. A person who used to abuse. A person who used to steal. A person who was a nonsense. He's now turning you into a great man, into a great woman. And no one is seeing that. They are seeing you as a loser. Somebody shout and say, I have, in God we never waste time. Louder than that. And understand this as I'm about to close. We never waste time in God. Whenever we are in God. And what is so amazing is this. The psalmist says, Psalms 84 verses 10. And this is going to bless you. NLT version says, now watch this. NLT version says in Psalms 84 verses 10. A single day 
in your courts, O oh God, is better than a thousand elsewhere. What you have just done right now is better than your life being elsewhere. Because today you are in the presence of God. You are going to be more blessed than before. There are people right now, they are at the table having lunch. There are people right now, they are running after money, after deals. But you, you are in the presence of God. The Bible is saying a single day in your court, oh God, is better than a thousand elsewhere. And because you are in the presence of God, get ready to be blessed by God in Jesus name. Ah, because you are in the presence of God, get ready to be blessed. This is the other side of God people don't understand about your life. Say, I have a God <laughs> who's going to glorify me. Speak it loud. Say, I have a God who's going to glorify me. Are you ready for glorification? You must know him. And in Deuteronomy, watch this. He says, for all these 40 years, their garments are not worn out. They are fought. Neither they are fought for 40 years. And verses 5. See what scripture says in verses 5. You should know in your heart that as a man just attains his son, so the Lord just attains you. Most times the disciplining of God, most times the humbleness of God is instilling discipline in us. How much disciplined are you going to become when you are in God with billions of money? How much disciplined in life when you are in God are you going to become when you have reached a level of glory? Will God still be number one? And that is what God wants. However much he has given you, your need and your want, he wants his position as number one because it is him who has made you. It is him who has brought that money. It is him who has brought that favor. It is him who has brought that marriage. It is him who has brought that company. It is him who has given you that contract. He wants to remain God because it is him who has made you. So these are things we will not understand. He's not after punishing you. He's after disciplining you. To be a disciplined child. And verses 6. See what scripture says. In verse 6. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God. To walk in his ways and to fear him. And verses 10. Because of time. Verses 10. See what the Bible says. Ah. This is where the challenge is. Tell your neighbor. This is where the challenge of your life is. Having received, even let me come closer to you. Having received the best from God. Will you wait for the next level for God to show you the way to go Emma with your best? Or after receiving your best, God is no more. Because we've seen in Isaiah. He's saying Isaiah as we've seen 48, 17 NIV version. It is the Lord who teaches us. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you. After he has brought the best, you still hang in there to wait for him to direct you where to go with your best. But here's the challenge. Having got your best, you have now a job, you have a company, you are known Favor has come upon you. I don't need church. We prayed those years. We fasted those years. What of tomorrow? What of tomorrow? There is a future that needs God in your life. But because now it is well. That is why he's saying in the tournament. And listen to me very well as I close. In the tournament he's saying when you have eaten when you have eaten and you are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. And look at verses 11. And verses 11 says, beware that you don't forget. Beware that you don't forget. Tell your neighbor that is where your challenge is. Forgetting where you began with with your God. You remember when you had just gotten saved? All you wanted is prayer. All you wanted is God. But now you have added many things to salvation. What is that man talking about? 
I have an appointment. What is he talking about? I have an altar to go to. When you got saved, were you looking for the altar? You are looking for God. All you wanted is God. But now upon God, because you have eaten, you are full. Hmm? You've eaten, you're full. You can't hold on with God anymore. You have a business, you have a job, you have a salary, you have a husband, you have a wife, you have children. Now, it is all about you. Beware that you don't forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgment, his status, which I command you today. 15. Tell your neighbor, because you forget so much, even you're dozing right now. But remember those days, the whole night you never slept. Demons were tormenting you. You come to church, you can't even sleep. You're just waiting for only one word. One word is enough. But now you want words. Kumbechakusula. The sent is a wabam. Nima kube chikumpola. Mukama na kusasila ni chikuvako. Katu chaya gari roso kukulotia. Atinga bako labatia. Katu ya gara chikusitula, chikunyueza, chikuongela yo. Where have you been? You have forgotten. <laughs> Fifteen, I close. <laughs> Fifteen, I close. Who led you through great and terrible wilderness? Chukida mno mugambe, chukida. Kati ya baraka, haka imba ke Ebenezo, imba na kaimbe, na ito wakana na kaoli. Ebeneza. Atu kamale yu, atu koza atia. Atena akula atia. Nyinga uliyoso bula no kuimba kwe Ebeneza kwe. Buliwa. <laughs> mukama sasida zunzuno yamba mukama mukama masiga gago 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 neka ebeneza atuje wala ebeneza atutwala waloyo ne akutwala ngwe wetwala taina ja kutwala wamuleka da eli ema wamuleka da miakeji Jirunjo nori weka. Sebo mchala sebo ufu. Jinori weka. Chovola ba wetu ma. Buli choko la nze. Nze. Nze nga mkama gamba vanangi. Wande ka. Who led you through that great and terrible wilderness? In which there were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water. Ni chukida mno mugambo chukide mbelezo zonawe wa yaga nanga katondo. Ni katika kondo. Kakondo kota ina. Lava yaka kufudu de maso gama kama. Rulinga to inacho linango yaga chukida mno mugambo tuwaba tutia. Eh? Rulinga to inako lina nenga katonda wachi. Ne ama zo kue bio bio na. Wanga tuweta da milio ni chikumi. Si wamani. Zemi ya naku zino si vitegela. Nenga lulito inakoli na ngo vitegela. Chikambe munu. Lulinge chikuleta. Obaba abu uli dechi nenga longo okuba. Naka lulu wa uli ya muna kakubi ngo kakuba. Na yekati. Usoka kuetegeza bichie vye vide kanya abantu. 
ye chiche chiba kubie ngalo beyeza mchala beyeza ni we uja naba ntua baku vengalo na ingalo li gozi kuba weka amina nukwa na nekumuno na kufunia nga wadetu o chite gedecho wama na yekati o kukube ngalozo olinga MOP leo wakugambe imirida o sinzi buenga Ola jo sinziza. Ne ingaluli. Na yekati. Ngaluli te bakugama na kugama kuimirira. Ne yekati gwe gwe bagama. Abatu dawo muimirire. Ate no uganira ne ku ntebe. Tuli bantu bakulu. Ate luli mwali bato. Chuki na mnuo mbuze waloko kuli muto. Eh? Tuliba antu wakulu. Tuliba antu wakulu. Kati, kati olabo olimu chini. Ate wogambi antu olimu kuru. Ngaye ya kufuru wa mkuru. Sigwe. It's not you. It is God. And the Bible says in verse 16, and follow me very well. In verse 16, the Bible says, Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your father did not know, that he may humble you, that he may test you to do you good in the end. Whatever God does, he's looking at the good of your end. He's looking at the end being your good. And see, a inzo kusekerida, abantuba inzo kutani koko gerida, kaba chaka kasako, kale mende muviobu lokosi, waliofu nyeche mukatonda, teba manyi, there is the God of the end. And I'm here to declare, your end in God will be an end of testimony. If you can know God, if you you can believe in God. I love what Job says. He has lost everything. People are laughing at him. People are talking bad against him. Now he has nothing. He stands in Job chapter 19 verses 25. And what does he say? He says for I know. It is time to know that there is still a redeemer of your life. It is time to know that Jesus is still Jesus in your life. It is time to know that God is still God in your life. He is your redeemer for God's sake. He redeemed you to make you better. He redeemed you to make your future shine in Jesus' mighty name. He stands and says, I know that my redeemer liveth. He shall stand at last. And today, listen to this. God never comes at first. Uh -uh. Ever it's the devil that comes. Ever people come. Ever words come. He does not come at first. He comes at the end. When everyone has spoken it all. When everyone has given up on you. When everyone says you can't be anything. At the end, he's a redeemer. At the end, he's a savior. At the at the end he will bless, at the end he will heal, at the end he will restore, at the end he will glorify you, at the end he will turn you into a testimony. The end part of God is a time of you celebrating and showing people the right way how to live. All these years, yes they may have said whatever they have said, but at the end they will say, let us go to your God. At the end they will bow down, they will say your God is God. They did it unto Joseph. He is sold. He passes through whatever he passes through. But every, oh my God, every suffering he went through, whatever Joseph went through, the Bible says God was with him. Why? Joseph knew God. Whenever you know God, yes, trouble will come, but he will be with you. And what happened? At the end of it all, he's exalted. God has taken him to a level of his dream. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 42 verses 6, what happened in chapter 42 verses 6? All those who accused him, they came and bowed down before him. I stand to prophesy whatever has been strong against your life whatever has stood against your life from now it's gonna bow down it's gonna bow down I repeat it again whatever has seemed to exalt 
itself above you. It is going to bow its face to the earth as God exalts your life in Jesus' mighty name. And if you believe it, you shout and say, let it be unto me in Jesus' name. Somebody shout and say, my end is blessed. <laughs> Speak it loud, say, my end is blessed. Your end is blessed. Tell your neighbor, my end is blessed. The beginning is not a good story. The beginning, you want God there. But there are many talking. There are many, there are many people in the beginning. But at the end, when they are all tired, they can no longer speak. What will they speak that is new? Turn to that neighbor and tell your neighbor, you've spoken ever since I came in this church. What new thing are you going to speak? And Joseph told them in Genesis 50 verses 20, you met evil. <laughs> Can you imagine? You meant evil against me, but God met it for good. In life, as I close with this, in life, say in life, Louder than that. When I'm with God. When I have known my God. Whatever is meant for evil. God. Means it for good. And to my life. Why don't you stick to such a God? Why don't you know such a God? Tebeza. Bakuroga, Baku get it. Avantu Baku Duka. Katonagam Bibu Nabi Runch, Kabibeo. Nabama Zobi could have your night and your camp we must say. Nabimaz, Nabama Zobi Kola, Uncle Fully ten. Kubanga <laughs> Wanji, omshara wono. Yari awele za mukama. Ababi neba mulumba mukovi, neba mbechi gala che munu. Neba tuwale bintu vye nyumba ye. Awa neba tani koko gela. Agenzi, afude, yena nasa nyara, nage na mkagali, na akola bichi. Awa nabe yeba na abe la obatia. Mukama na ingira u. Na muonya, na muja kagali. Awa na, beba libera likida katiko naba libuera te beba mula bidida. The end story of your life is a testimony in Jesus' name. Humble it, Amen. Humble it, Amen. Go many of us about to call it a maori day. Not to put the name for a bit. Eri odi ali buli day. Lero. Chikas abantu ba chikas kasantu tu ina katonda. Ku ku kuraba aba okola batia. Bagenzi. But with the war, play, 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 play. Um, abo, Ogamba Valentia, Tibali, Abadi by Nakatunda. Karuna Chia Koreda, Bantu Abo. Echintu, 
Echala bikange chibie nyo. Ache kati. Mukama na achi chusene chibere chirunji enyo. Eh? Echila bika nge chibie nyo. Mubula mubo. Ache chichige nukula bika obulunji enyo. Mubula mubo. Ache teke nogamba kachimbeko mulinye ya yesu. Let's clap those hands. Wow. Let's clap those hands unto the Lord. Okay. Chuki na muno mgambo laba we wakuta. Now your challenge is this. Luringo chete agane mukama. Ngateba kugamba kuzikuba. Ni wali debi sausage. Wena wagejam oli munene muziu. Uli woku na boti bugumu. Tukwede muka mengalu. Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ababali wansi mbasitwe mbateke wali. Praise the Lord. Ngawe bali mbasitwe ngawe bali. Praise the Lord. Say my end. Oh my God. Speak it loud. Say my end. It's going to be a good end. Amen. Come here mama. Your end is a good end. If you believe it, you shout amen. Shout amen. Say my end. is a good end. Speak it loud. Speak it loud. You know, right now, God is doing something. Olaba, okuwa no mpaka wali chiri nge chire. E chiri yao. Ni unobo kiri zaka tuonda. Ogenda kulaba. Obla mubo. Sima nyiru haji chiri yao. Sima nyiru haji chizao. Neye ye katuonda chapola. Kuchusa. Abandu sheba manye. Of no bujudis. Of no bujudis. Goge na kula bachiwa itakatoni. Eche chile chikubi sao. Chile tabu judis. Chichu sambera. Oh. Bage nanawe kuno nyawo. Baga minti tuwa gala. Ubula mubwe butyo. Nenga teba manye jofu dene katonda u. Teba manye. Teba manye masika kukabie. Na ye chile. Chiza uwodi. Kaba kuno nyeko. Bakubile ngoma gondi. Kuba, kuba, kuba. Bakubile. Wabere wobu chudis. Wabere wencha ulo. Katona nyweze chikambo chile. Oh my God. Gama malako. Chogere gama mlinye lea yesu. Malako. Nobu judis of lunch. Ogena kumalako nobu judis. Wanji. O malako na si. Ogena kumalako nobu judis of lunch. Mulichifocho na muntu ogo 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 ogo. Mkama kwa gendo kwa ta kwa. Never nine can be bullied. Katondo yo. Agenda kuyamba. Agenda kutasa. Katondo yo. Wadio kuyamba. Wadio kutasa. Agenda kuchosa. Wechoba de rosubida. Ya agenda chichosa. Kasirana. Teka chakola. Katula beche kalibera. Katuka aa. Bujudisi. Budi chifo, muntu wa guo guo guo. Eroli okote gere. Ntedi yo katonda. Azze bibie. Ngabandu. Tebacha kwe taga. Ya kwe taga. Ngabandu. Teba ina kalunji. Kebala bambula mubo. Ya ina chalaba. Kamba, 
Enkomeriru yobula mbwange. Bujudis. Ochikiriza kwe. Gwali wano ochikiriza. 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 The end is testimony. <laughs> the end is testimony. The end is testimony. Gwali wano ochikiriza. Gwali wano ochikiriza. Chicho chifute wali chise wano. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. Can Onabe Robu Judis. Now we bakwo gede ko. Bakamenti na bakatonda cha kose. Na bakatonda cha sobolo kola. Bacho gede. Bacho gede. Bacho gede. Eri nyelo li tegede keke. Mubi gambo bebo geda. Kuruno sibi gambo bi abu vi. Nebi abu judis muli nyeri ayes. Asegede no imida no teke mikone cho wakulu. Kama muli nyeri ayes. My life has a testimony. Speak it loud. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. My life has a testimony. We turn about you to get a choke. Say my life has a testimony. But could be the woman. So say my life has a testimony. Speak it loud. Jesus. Riba sete kete brudus. Ripere si tambrada basayaka. Zikume. Say my life. As a testimony, O Mayimu Kama Chapolena, I let me Sabuli Mbera, I Jichusa, I Jichusa, Embera Zichuka, Embera Zichuka. Zichuka, oh, oh. Embera Zichuka. I prophesy right now and to your lies in Jesus' mighty name. Tewadi Mbere Genda Kute Kawansi. Tewadi Chigambo Chamwana Wamutu. Chigenda Kusukuruma. Busubi Subis of Yoba Katonda. E Yopla Mupomulinye Yesu Christ of Nazareth. O Yokatonde Ya Yokera. Atacha Yokera. O Yokatonde Ya Yokera. Atacha Yokera. Ayokere Yopula Mupo. Chiribulunji. Ayokere Yopula Mupo. Chiri bulunchi, ayogere di obulambo. It is well. Oh my God, it is well. It is well. Hai mukama chitange sukuru mebi gambo bi abalabe. Sukuru mebi gambo bi abantu. Kubanga abantu bano ba full obu judi simuli nyeri ya Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Obani ayogede, obani ayogera, obanbera che yogera. Now I declare that oh my God, the promises stand. Budi ali kechi subizo chobwa katonda tengo chidina. Budi ali kechi subizo chobwa katonda. Kachi mididere romuli nyeri ya Jesus. Toli muavo ah ah. Tokenda kuburwa. Ah, ah. Katona di wamu na wachu sembera in Jesus mighty name. Hai mukama swaza ko swaza kababa debo kera. Oba sidi sengo kole raba antubo muli nyiri a yesu. Gamanti a yesu. Chogere gamanti a yesu. Nyingi debiro. Ebyo kwe basa. Thank you Jesus. Gamanti a yesu. Nyingi debiro. Thank you, Lord. To no end. Amasogo Kagarabe Obunji Wamkama. Gama Masogan. Bocho. So go to you. Wow. Gamant Ama Sogang. O Nalaba. O Lonji Wamukama. Bible dear Gamanti Oro Katonda Nazao. O Lambuayoki. Job forty-two ten. The words I'm speaking right now, there are three people, and this is going to happen to you. The God of restoration is going to restore you. And the Lord restored all the losses of Job. That is what Job forty-two ten says. All his losses. And verses 12, thank you, Jesus. 
The Bible says, and the second half, that is NLT version of Job's life, was blessed. Thank you, Jesus. More than the first half. Yes. 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 And the second half. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the second half of Job was blessed more than his first half. Katondo no siwabi gambo bugambo. Arina man. Father, you are doing it. Divine restoration. And the God of your second half of life will restore. You won't call her whatever you've called her before. She's restored. She is blessed. She is better. She is no longer in that position anymore. The Lord has blessed her. Leave her, leave her, leave her. Pick her up, guys. Pick her up. The Lord has blessed her. The Lord has restored her. The Lord has blessed her. The Lord has restored her. Child of God, listen to this. After restoration, what is next? Bring her here. Bring also that mama here. Bring that mama here. After restoration, what is next? The end of life. The end of your life must bring glory. Jesus. Get all this line. One, two, three, and bring them four. Quickly. One, two, three, four. The end of your life. Quickly, guys, from the first one. From the first line. The other one. The other one. Quickly, guys. Come, guys. They must be restoration. They must be restoration. And after you are restored, what is next? After you are restored, what is next? There must be testimony after restoration. After you are restored, what is next? The end becomes better. The end becomes better. The end becomes better. And I'm here to declare the end of your life must be better. The end of your life must be prosperous. The end of your life must be a testimony. The end, the end, the end. That is what God is after. He's after your end. Something must happen at the end of your life. Something must happen at the end of your life. Something must happen at the end of your life. Something must happen at the end of your life. Somebody shout at the end. Louder. When? Jesus. When? At the end, God must glorify himself. You mama come, you mama come. Sebo come, you mama come. At the end, there must be testimony. At the end, we no kubera wobu judici. At the end, God must change things. At the end, things must happen. At the end, testimonies must take place. There is the end of life. You are not ending now. God is taking you somewhere. At the end, something must happen. At the end, Something must happen. Say at the end. Jesus. Where? Come mama. Come mama. Come Sebo. Come. At the end something must change. At the end something must happen. Something must happen. At the end testimony must happen. At the end miracles must happen. That is the God I'm talking about. Mama come. Mama come. Mama come. Sebo come. Mama come. We are talking about the end. The end must carry. Testimony, testimony, testimony at the end in Jesus' mighty name. I am here to declare the God we believe in is a God of miracles. The God we believe in is a God of change. There must be change at the end. Testimonies at the end. God must bring a difference tonight. You guys come quickly. All of you quickly. The end is what I declare. At the end is what I declare. Something good must happen. You are not in salvation to suffer. At the end, something good, something 
good must happen at the end in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout and say, at the end. That is the God I'm talking about. We're not here to play games. People to laugh. People to talk. You guys come quickly. Jesus, come over this side. Riposhete kete brodosaya. Arapakate brodosia. Quickly, we don't have the time, please. At the end, something must change. At the end, miracles must take place. At the end, testimonies must take place. At the end, oh my God. Rekele sota bradakaya. You are changing lives. Somebody shout and say, at the end. Guys, come quickly, come quickly. Somebody shout and say at the end. Now, that means he stands at the end. And when he has stood at the end, testimonies begin to happen. Their words are over. It is testimony that begins to happen. Their actions are over. It is the power of God that begins to turn around things. It is the power of God that begins to cause a difference at the end. <laughs> at the end in Jesus' name. Somebody shout and say at the end. That is where you're going. That is why you must go. At the end, you must have money. At the end, you must be rich. At the end, you must prosper. At the end, your life must be a life of testament. You guys come quickly. Say at the end, oh my God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody shout and say at the end of my life. That means you're not going to die poor. That means you're not going to die miserable. That means the Lord is with you. That means the Lord will turn around things. That means testimonies will happen. At the end, things must happen. At the end, miracles must take place. At the end, oh my God, at the end, your life must be better. At the end, in Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout and say, at the end, <laughs> at the end, you must drive. At the end, you must be rich. At the end, you must prosper. Somebody shout and say, at the end, at the end of it all, God is going to bless you. At the end of it all, God is going to prosper you. At the end, at the end, and I declare in Jesus' mighty name, Eya kuko miango tandika, katika tonda gamba, ngo mala kobula muvo, onabero wenchaulo, ngo bulambo, oh guys, come, 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 come. It's a lepoto, si le takaya, sebo changu, changu, not you. Come quickly. At the end, something must happen. Change. In his life. At the end, miracles must take place. At the end, something good must happen in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout and say, at the end. I am come at you so much, John. Buwabu judisi. Kwa miebi gambo bi avantu. Kwa miengkola zomuntu. Kwa miengkola zomubi. Somebody shout and say, at the end. Miracles will happen through your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Testimonies will happen through your lives in Jesus' mighty name. Good things will happen to you. Somebody shout and say, at the end. Lift up those hands. You guys come, all of you, up to the end. Step over there. What do you do? Touch his life, Lord, and bless him. Lift up those hands. Job says the end of the sin is better than the beginning. Everyone shout and say the end of the sin. We're told about. Somebody shout and say the end of the scene. No, that's what Job says. Chapter 8, verse 7. The end what? The end of what? The end is much more greater and better than the beginning. Oh my God. Seka. Seka. Oh, Angule. Seka. Oh, Chusibwe. The end. Now listen to me. He 
He's with you. He's with you. Gwe toma nchi kutuoseko. Ense kozi chuse. Gwe ogendo kuseka. Basese. Okuseka kwa wekuko mi. Gwe ense kozo zabu julisi. Basese. Zabu julisi. Ense kozo zabu julisi. Yes. Zabu julisi. Gwe seka. Oh my God. Kumanyaba hako kule chintu. Nese koto ina. Sebo. Toso hako seka. And that is what the devil does. Asobo lo kubake nese koso. Ngomu utu nga tosobo na nakuseka. Na ye lero. Oyo katondo mwesi kwa. Aze. Oyokatondo wa mani sebo. Akwe sanyo. Oyokatondo oyo. Azao. Akuzeo. Thank you Lord. Ebi kukabia. Bikome. Amaziga. Mama, come here. Come here. Ogambe bawo. Wanji. Mwadesku manye inyo. Na yogambe bawo. Batu gambe today mu church to save. to Jesus and give him praise. Jesus. Where is the doctor? Jesus. Jesus. A friend for a Doctor, come here. Saints, let's clap our hands to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. things exceedingly abundantly and above all that you bless him oh God thank you Lord
Say, Lord Jesus, let my eyes see your goodness in my life. Come, Mama, with your baby. Come with your baby. Come with your baby quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Come with your baby. Sunday you are here. So after service we can give birth. Hebrew woman. Now here you are. What's the name of your baby? Om tuma ba mupira ati. Data wa yagala nyo mupira. Na mtuma zidani. Nechitegeza ati. Jesus, Jesus, Father, bless these little ones. Jesus. Bless these little ones in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Bless them. Mamas, lift up those eyes. And look at me. Look at me. Mama, look at me. Mama, look at me. Touch their lives, O oh Lord, and bless them. Abana ba wobuta la ba naku, na ba no ai mukama Yesu. O mukono go guama nyo ba umuri rako, o mukono go guama nyo ba berako. Oh, mukono go guaman yo bawanguza in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Riba sete brodosh. Shala kwe jam.
give them their meals. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, a friend forever. Let's clap our hands and praise him. Someone come and help her, please. Let's clap those hands and praise the Lord. Say my eyes. Louder than that, say my eyes. I'm going to see the goodness of God. Speak it loud, say my eyes. I'm going to see the goodness of God. Let's clap those hands for one minute. Touch them, my God. Bless every man, bless every woman. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ribe se teke tabre de baya, se teke tabre dos, a tele bato manama na te baye. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and clap those hands. Touch them, Lord. Bless them, Jesus. Go with them, go with them, go with them. Ribe re se teke tabre dos, rapa pa 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 en de bataye, riprosi en te manana na taka. Go ahead and clap those hands. Jesus. Jesus. Engareso sikube. Budi echari e wala mbula mubo mukama achisembezi. Achisembezi nga achiteka mbula mubo mlinyira yesu. Weba de mukama. Weba de yesu. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Kube engareso. Bless them, Lord. Bless your people. Ena maso kubenga lezo. Budi echa bulanchi ita chikome umbula mubo. In the name of Jesus. We bade Yesu. A friend. Kubesikube, Mobula Mowang Molini de Yesu Christo Amina. Let's give God the praise. Father, I pray that in their lives you will do great things from now in Jesus' name. Wow. Hallelujah. Everyone get a hold of your seed. Get a hold of the best seed you can give. And let's come and plant seeds. Gamba I yesu. Nze nobula mbwangi. Katubero ujulisi. Katwa yensi go. Eri obula mbwa. No ujulisi amasu go gage nukutani kwa kulaba. Obula mbwa. O imidide. Nesigoyo. Ogame nangirida. Nama nyigamba nangirida. Ili obulamu wangi. Okubiru obulamu. Obomu kisa. Now get your seed. Get your offering. And come and give in Jesus name. If your money is on the phone. You can use that phone number on the screen. Wherever you're watching us from, there are those numbers that are running on the screen that you can use to give your offerings to plant your seeds. Let's go ahead and plant our seeds in the name of Jesus. Saint Jesus Banga Zirikusimo. Because this is way of Maba to demo immediately. It's time to give, please. Father bless. 
bless your people bless your people lord now lift up those hands and say i'm blessed louder than that say in the name of jesus i'm blessed you are in this place you're not yet saved you want to give your life to christ jesus touch your chest and repeat these words whenever you're watching me from and you're not yet saved do the same and repeat these words and say lord jesus here i am in your presence as a sinner i ask you to forgive me of all my sins wash me with your blood and cleanse me with your blood with my mouth i confess and with my heart i believe that you are lord and savior of my life come into my life and save me forgive me of all my sins you say it and i denounce you with your principalities and powers the lord jesus christ is my lord and my savior today i am saved lord jesus write my name in the book of life and let me enter heaven in jesus name and every believer shall say lord amen wow hallelujah yes wherever you're watching us from next week is our thanksgiving day on the 28th 28th so we're going to be here and pastor robert kayanja of Rubaga Miracle Center is going to be here. Our spiritual father, our pastor, is going to be leading us from the beginning of the service to the end. Don't miss Thanksgiving. Let us come and thank God for who he is in our lives. And God is going to do great, great, great things. So we begin at three. We welcome all of you. You can come with your friends. You can come with your family members, the people you work with, your neighbors. Come with everybody. It's going to be heaven on us in this place. We are already feeling the atmosphere. The heavens are open. Please don't miss. Come and be blessed. And it's going to be great. Great miracles are going to happen. The Lord is going to speak unto us. Great things are going to happen. So we're waiting for you on the 28th. We begin at 3. You are all most welcome. Don't miss Sunday. Sunday we're going to have a great service. And also don't miss Friday. Tonight we're going to be in the presence of God praying. Especially if you're a member of this church. Don't miss Sunday because we've gotten some instructions that you must follow. So come and know what to do in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, richly bless you. Thank you for being with us. You guys in the diaspora, God, richly bless you. You guys in the land, have a blessed weekend. God, richly bless you. Bye-bye.